Let me start by saying that I am normal. By this, I mean that I come from a normal, intelligent family where I was taught from childhood that trust and love are the foundation of any relationship. Also, nature did not hurt my appearance, giving me a sporty physique, which I supported, killing under the weights in gyms. The female sex was always sympathetic to me, which could not but increase my male self-esteem. However, my family values, which were firmly ingrained in me, did not allow me to leave an unbridled male lifestyle. Although I was popular with women, so I firmly imbibed that the woman you love is your icon. Your temple is purer, wider, which after your mother there is no one else. And while it doesn't have much relevance to my story, I will tell you that I've been a fan of aviation since childhood, the sky and airplanes are my everything. This is a part of me. That is why I entered the higher civil aviation school, after graduating from which, having passed a thorny path of all sorts of committees and examinations and training centers for flight crews, I finally received my flight certificate and proudly took the right seat in the cockpit of Boeing 737 as a co-pilot trainee of a major airline, then began to hone my skills of taming the steel bird in the sky, gaining experience and flight hours. Another key detail in my story is my close friend John. He was like a brother to me. We had been friends since we were kids even before high school. He was a time-tested man with whom I had been in various stories and all sorts of trouble, after which I made sure that he would never betray or cheat. We always helped each other out and helped each other out in different situations. Of such people they say that with him, though in the fire, though in battle or in a reconnaissance, or whatever they say, but there was one bad thing about John. He was by nature a terrible womanizer. Nature has endowed him with incredible charisma and tongue-in-cheek, which has always helped him find common ground with women and get her what he wants. He was always able to manipulate a woman as he pleased. Thanks to these qualities, he even managed to promote himself at one of the major trading corporations. He had one belief, which he was constantly convinced, that a woman is a female looking for a male, and that you only need to be able to read a woman, be able to find her secret buttons and levers, and then just push them. And any beautiful woman, whether she's a student or a seasoned businesswoman, will be in your bed. He was a narcissist and a psychologist. I must say he did have a gift for persuasion. Apparently, that's why his career skyrocketed. So were the airliners I took up into the sky. The subject of our constant arguments was his saying that a woman should not be worshipped if you did not want to suffer from love for her, which was why he did not seek to marry. He had completely spoiled his opinion of women, saying that there was not yet one born with whom he could tie his life together. I contradicted him and told him that he just hadn't loved anyone seriously yet. All I heard back was, dude, get down to earth already. There are no perfect women. As symbolic as that sounds, I really was in heaven and he was on earth. It just so happened that at different times. But John and I ended up in the same camp city. I was working for an airline that was assigned to an airport and he was a commercial director for a major company in the same city. I was glad that life did not separate me from my best friend. And even there we continued to talk regularly. Now about my girlfriend. Her name is Rihanna. I met her at a restaurant that we ended up at. We were celebrating the birthday of one of our girls, a flight attendant. She happened to be a close friend of one of her relatives. We sat together at the same table and occasionally bumped into each other. She was dazzlingly beautiful, a natural blonde with velvet skin and a beautiful, graceful gait. I felt that I would never forgive myself if I did not get to know her better. So I decided to go for broke, and when the slow music began to play, I asked her to dance. The confidence was given by the flying uniform which I was wearing, as a few hours ago I returned from the next flight. She responded coquettishly, how can you say no to a man in uniform? We moved slowly to the beat of the music and chatted. We talked about my job as a pilot. She asked me about the secrets of the flight kitchen with interest. It was obvious that she really enjoyed my company. She told me about herself, that she worked as a translator of foreign languages, and that she had been renting an apartment with her sister for four years. By the end of the evening, I felt as if I had known her for a long time. There is such a feeling when you are very close on the same wavelength with a person, and you realize that she is my ideal. I already had something inside of me, something very strong inside of me. I really didn't want to say goodbye to her. 
So when it was time to go home, I insistently asked her if I would walk her home. She agreed, and we walked quickly to the subway, hopped on one of the last cars, and rushed to the southwest of the city. On the way, we continued to chat, and she became more and more interesting to me. Of course, I finally found out for myself the question of whether she was married and whether she had a boyfriend. She told me it had been a couple of months since her last relationship had ended and she had only recently recovered from the depression of the breakup. For some reason this fact made me notice her seriousness, if she was worried about it, we went up to her floor. As we left I took her hand and told her that I had enjoyed the evening and that I would like to see her again. She said she totally supported my idea and we exchanged phone numbers. She expressed concern that it was getting late and the subway was out of order and how I would get home, which I also couldn't help but point out and said I would call a cab. The next day I was leaving for another flight. I called her and invited her to the restaurant when I flew back to the city. She said yes and I made reservations for the day when I flew back to the other city. We texted each other. I couldn't wait to see her again tonight on the return flight. All I could think about was her. In the evening, we met again at a restaurant and spent time together again. I felt like a young student who had fallen in love with his classmate. From then on, we started seeing each other almost every day, as much as my flying schedule would allow. She often stayed at my place, which made my sister nervous, who was worried about her. I gave her gifts, flowers, even wrote songs with my guitar. There was no limit to the inspiration. With my friend John, we saw each other fresh as we often didn't have the same work schedules, either I was on a trip or he was on a business trip. On the phone, I shared with him the joy of meeting an amazing girl without whom I do not even know how I lived before. He said, the main thing is not to dissolve into it completely, bro, fraught with consequences. I waved him off saying, with your approach, you will never find good girls. Everything went on as it was. I invited Rihanna to live with me in the apartment that I rented the airline. She agreed on the condition that I would get to know her sister and she would make sure she let her go into good hands. One day I was able to meet John. He wanted to share the joy of going to live and work in the United States for six months under contract. I congratulated him on his success and he, in his usual typical manner, said, now I'll try American girls. I laughed. A couple of days later, we said goodbye on the phone and he flew to Boston. For a few months with Rihanna, we lived beautifully. The period of the relationship gradually went from its tumultuous phase to a more measured and quiet one. I would go off on flights and on each day to my job. At times I wasn't home for days at a time. And when our weekends coincided, we spent time together doing household chores, going to the supermarket to shop, riding our bikes. We gradually stuck to each other. At times, when possible, I would Skype with John. He would talk about his job, about dumb American laws and beautiful American girls. I told him, you never shrink. Come on, hurry up and I'll introduce you to Rihanna, and you'll see what women must be like. Avos settled down. He said, there's no such thing. Anyway, that's how six months flew by for him. I was already an experienced pilot, a trainee, and the management of the airline decided to transfer me to the position of co-pilot on tourist flights. I was glad. And Rihanna rejoiced with me. By the way, this change also promised increased pay, though longer separations from home. The day came when I told Rihanna tomorrow I have a flight with the flight committee and the inspecting instructors. After that I should be approved as a co-pilot. A week before that Jonah called me and said in a joyful voice to wait for me in my home country at the same time to introduce him to my queen. I took off on my flight and passed all the tests with flying colors. Then I was proud to have my new position written down in my papers without the word trainee. While I was away, John called me. We agreed when I arrived home, the three of us would go out and listen from the middle to stories about America and celebrate my promotion. When I arrived, however, the weather left a lot to be desired. It was raining thievily which ruined our plans to go out to a cafe together. So we decided to meet at Rihanna and I's house. I picked John up from one of the subway stations as I was driving the car from the airport. On the way he said, I won't talk about America for now. The evening is still to come, but I'll tell you how I fucked a girl like that the other day. You wouldn't believe it. I laughed again. Wow, when can you do that? But excited about his next victory, he didn't let up. 
John went on to tell me, in verse and color, how he'd gotten off with another hottie. By the way, she had a boyfriend, he said. Only he was away somewhere, on a business trip. So the girl went off the rails, but she did such things. I'll tell you, he probably doesn't satisfy her at all. She's off the chain. Got her number. I'll have to do it again. I must admit, honestly, I was unpleasant to hear it. And I was mentally sympathizing in absentia with the guy this girl had cheated on with John. Okay, I said stop it. And that one really gets the idea that all girls are like that. As we were pulling up to the house, we went up to our apartment. When I opened the door, I immediately got a whiff of the fragrant smell of the poor man's cooking in the oven. We began to fan out. And upon hearing the rustling in the hallway, Rihanna came out into the hallway to greet us. Hello, she pronounced. At that moment John, kicking off his boots, said, Good evening. And when he looked up at her, he changed his face in an instant. By the way, Rihanna also had a very strange reaction to John, as if she was surprised, not understanding that reaction. I proceeded to introduce them and called Rihanna my girlfriend and what I thought was my future wife. I smiled. They greeted each other and then I motioned for everyone to go into the living room to the set table. But I couldn't figure out what had happened. I had the feeling that John was afraid of her. That's what it seemed to me at the time. I even joked that she didn't bite. We sat down at the table, but for some reason I could sense that there was a lot of tension. I wasn't expecting that at all. John was batting his eyes at the floor. Rihanna, who had been asked a lot about John before, was quiet in the moment and didn't ask any questions, though that kind of behavior wasn't her style. Suddenly John complained of a sharp deterioration in his well-being and said he had to leave immediately. I was increasingly confused at that point and didn't understand anything. I offered to call him an ambulance on the spot, but he flatly refused and said he'd rather go home. In my distraught feelings I continued to lament that this was not good. It turned out that we hardly sat and talked at all. John apologized and said he would call me tomorrow because he had something important to talk to me about. I said okay, and after that he left. Rihanna was sitting in the living room and was obviously upset about something. I started asking her what was wrong, but she persisted and blamed it on fatigue, and then she said that she was very tired and dizzy. I ended up going to bed in total incomprehension and irritation. Rihanna insisted that she needed to do the dishes and unwind. I fell asleep and didn't wait for Rihanna to help with the dishes. Since I had returned from a flight that was very demanding, I was pretty exhausted. I was determined to keep talking though. The next day, I had the day off as promised. John called and offered to meet me. His voice was very agitated, like he was depressed. He asked to come to the cafe. I readily agreed, as I wanted to know why he had so abruptly left me yesterday. And what was this important conversation he wanted to tell me about? When we met him at the cafe, he was very nervous and I was worried. We sat down at the table, he was quiet for a while, gathering his thoughts, and then he began to speak. I've been thinking a long time about how to tell you this, and I still don't know. Anyway, I can't not tell you about it. If you don't want to know me after that, I understand. I tensed. Speak up. He went on, remember on the way home yesterday, I was telling you about a girl I was having fun with the other day. At this point, I begin to intuitively know what I'm talking about. I felt something taut inside me and about to rip. If I had been standing at this point, my legs would have just started to tighten. I was getting ready to hear the worst, that my mind was trying hard to ward off any bad thoughts. Siriyoga continued, that was your Rihanna. I'm sorry, but I didn't know she was your girlfriend at the time. It slipped out. I couldn't believe it. My icon, my temple, and my wife desecrated. And by my own best friend. At first I sat in a daze, and then, as I began to come back to reality, my usual conditioned reflex kicked in as it happens. In such cases, I slapped John in the face with a full swing. The moment I did, I heard shrieks from the people at the nearby tables, and then a couple of guys came running up sharply. The cafe security guard grabbed hold of us and started dragging us in different directions, gradually pushing us toward the exit. John, rubbing his ears, long face, shouted, That's it, no more. We carefully sat back down, but the cafe guard and the guys from the neighboring tables did not move away from us, fearing more confrontations, and in order to somehow defuse it, 
I said that we had already calmed down. They reluctantly walked away from us, and we were still the object of the entire cafe's attention. Until, as time passed, everyone gradually went back to their business. I sat there and hated everyone and everything around me. Rihanna, John, my job, which I really just idolized. I didn't know what to think, what to feel. John said, well, I was basically ready for that. He was slowly starting to get a black eye. And that was in complete prostration. My world had collapsed. I thought at that moment that I had lost the woman I loved and my best friend in one day. John kept repeating that he didn't know who she was. He kept saying words of forgiveness. I was depressed. I sat and listened to him and felt like I was drunk. Then we went outside. I didn't say anything. He offered to take a cab to take me home. I refused, but he came with me anyway. I looked out the window while we were in the cab, and I didn't care. All I felt was pain, burning my soul. The awareness of betrayal as if there was a knife sticking out of my back. Finally, I told him not to call or get in touch with me. If anything, I would call him myself. He said okay and left. I went home. Rihanna was sitting in the kitchen drinking tea. The TV in the kitchen was off, although always when she was there, he would come on something. Obviously, she was getting ready too. From my and look, she realized that I already knew everything. I asked her why and what she was missing. She said a phrase that just killed me. I can't figure out how it happened myself, but I'm pretty disgusted myself. It was like he hypnotized me. Please forgive me. I felt disgusted and immediately remembered from the middle the words about women's levers and buttons. It turns out he had found them. Could it be that he was right and that it was possible, with this technique, to seduce any woman? My soul just floundered. Rihanna cried and kept repeating. I'm sorry, I love you. Only now it sounded so nasty out of her mouth so insincere, like a burp. I asked her not to say those words. The middle of the story popped into my head again. How did he spend his time with her? She said, it's just that you're away from home for so long you're on trips. And sometimes you just want so much affection and attention. It's okay, it's as simple as that. I'm just away for so long. And she gave herself to the one who was competently hitting on her. We talked for a long time that night. I kept trying to understand the true mechanism of her infidelity, to understand the reasons behind it. I reconsidered my attitude to her and still could not justify what she had done. I did not summarize the results of our conversation that evening, which slowly turned into night because I was emotionally exhausted and fell into a deep sleep. I collapsed on my bed and passed out. There was a flight in the morning. I left the house in silence, not even saying goodbye to Rihanna. I didn't feel like talking to her. Though she tried her best to woo me, made me coffee and breakfast, but I didn't feel like anything. I got up in silence, woke up, walked out of the house, and headed to the airport for the flight committee. The doctor on duty suspended me from flying. He did not like my pulse and overall condition. It turned out that I had the whole day off, but I did not want to go home and spent a long time in an airport cafe. I was completely absorbed in myself and trying to weigh everything and analyze everything that had happened. I ended up making some big decisions. I broke up with Rihanna and asked her to leave my apartment. She went back to her sister's, though she cried and tried to talk for a long time. I was never able to forgive her, though my heart demanded forgiveness. But nevertheless, I, accustomed for my flying work, to rely on a cold mind and common sense calculation, decided that I would survive this breakup and preserve my dignity and respect for myself. A person who betrayed once and did it behind her back can do it again. Moreover, she was not going to admit it. If it wasn't for an accident like John, and how long would I have walked around with the betrayal and was it the only time? There's no telling. With John, we had worked things out. I did take into account the fact that he had confessed to everything on his own initiative, even though he knew that he could lose his friend. I think that was an act. He could have easily concealed it. And I would not have found out about it, and he didn't know who Rihanna's girlfriend was. Although John felt guilty about it for a long time. What about me? Now I often come home after flights to young flight attendants. I began to take advantage of what nature had given me and enjoy the pleasure of interacting with different women. I began to get what I did not get in my youth, breaking, so to speak, the patterns of pure sincere love. Now I do not know what should be a woman with whom I trace my life. So that's the story.
subscribe to the channel and click on the bell so you don't miss a new story.